As always, there's 5,000 different ways of doing the same thing. And in this episode, you're going to learn all the different ways of how to auto wire beans, construct beans with spring, and what the difference between these ways is, and why you'd want to use one or the other. Let's check it out. Okay, let's jump right back into our user service. And to take things away, in the last episode, what you did is you created a constructor for the user service. It has two dependencies, or it has two arguments rather, the mail service and the user deo. And whoever creates your user service passes these two arguments inside, you set them. And that's why this method or this way is called constructor injection, constructor dependency injection because you pass in these arguments through the constructor. But what you're gonna do now is delete that whole constructor, right? You have your mail service and user deo still inside, no constructor anymore, just the default one. And instead, you're gonna put at autowired here twice, once for mail service, once for user deo. And hopefully with that annotation, Spring is smart enough to just put the mail service inside here into that field, the user deo into that field. And that's why it's called field injection, direct field injection. And in case you're worrying, or maybe you encountered the inject annotation already in different projects, historically AutoWired was spring specific, whereas inject is the same, almost the same annotation as AutoWired, just a standard Java annotation that works across different frameworks like Spring and Juice, so other dependency injection frameworks. And there's also an add resource annotation, which is also similar to AutoWired, but we'll go into inject and resource in future episodes. For now, we wanna get started with add AutoWired. Good. Now, when you go back to your context configuration, you'll see you get a compile error because obviously that constructor doesn't exist anymore. So you delete these two fields. And now you don't need these method, method arguments anymore. You can also delete them. In the end, it just says return new user service and hopefully Spring is smart enough to scan that class when it created or that object when it created and see at AutoWired, I need to put in the mail service and the user deo. And interestingly enough, we can just open up our trading application, put a breakpoint here or rather here once we get our user service from the Spring application context and have a look inside the user service to see if Spring was smart enough to do what we wanted it to do. So hit debug. The debug window pops up. And as you can see already, the user service is here and it has a mail service and it has a user deo being set. Otherwise you would see equals null here or equals null here. So that worked. And now when you remove the breakpoint and run the application, go back to the console, you'll see sending out welcome email via localhost, saving user to the database. So everything actually worked. Great. So with that rush of adrenaline, let's go back to the user service and straight away learn about a third way of injecting these dependencies. That's what's called setter injection. So you could have some setters instead of injecting the fields directly here, you just put the auto wires on the setter and it would pretty much have the very same effect. The funny thing is what you want though is, online you'll find a ton of discussion about setter injection is bad, constructor injection is the only way to go, field injection is so much better or worse and whatever. And I don't really mind that much whatever way you use, I only mind that you're consistent across the whole project. So you're homogenous in your choice and you ju just don't mix up Everything is so in one class. You start out with constructor injection, then you go to field injection, then you go to auto uh, to setter injection, and, and whatever. Just be consistent in whatever way you choose. All right, let's quickly revert these changes here. And when you open up the context configuration again, another question pops up. You explicitly created that bean with a method and annotated with the add bean annotation and you simply return a new user service. And at the moment, it does nothing but create the default, call the default constructor and the fields get auto wired. Wouldn't it be nice if you could just remove the whole thingy here and then Spring somehow scans your package here, finds the user service and says, well, let's create a new bean for the user service. And that's what we're gonna do now. 
So start with another annotation and it's the component scan annotation. And by default, it will scan the package that your configuration class is in. So it will just scan all these files here. Then you go to your user service. It will also find out, well, you need a mail service here. You need a user deo here. But how does it know that the user service class is should be a bean? You could think, well, annotated with bean. No, you want to come annotated with a component annotation. That's why it's called component scan in the configuration. There's also an add service annotation, which is pretty much the same as component. Just so you know, there's a couple of more ways that make things a bit more explicit. So that is actually a service and has transactions or whatever. But we'll talk about that in later episodes as well. So for now, you say component user service. You have component scan enabled. No explicit bean configuration here anymore. Let's check it out again. Let's see if context get bean returns us null or a user service. You debug the application. Again, you hit the breakpoint and you see you have a user service. And the user service again has a mail service, a user deo. When you let the application run, check out the console. Again, you'll see, well, saving user to the database, sending out welcome email to the database. Great, so that is also possible. And as you can see already, what I just mentioned a minute before, when you go to the application context configuration, you have explicit beans in here, you have component scan enabled. The component scan will create the user service bean for you. User service now uses an auto wild annotation does direct field injection. Then you have the, these other beans who are using constructor injection. And it's just a couple of classes, not even three or four classes, and it's already a mess. And no one knows where these beans are configured, what the central solution to configure these beans are. Is it more explicit with the beans here, with the methods here? Is it more implicit? And imagine your application grows to a thousand classes or to 5,000, 10,000 classes. Then it gets really tricky and messy to understand what is being injected from where, how, and what. But that's where the where your next exercise comes in. I want you to remove the user deo. Think about if you want to go with constructor injection or field injection, whatever ever you want. Rewrite the user service to use the same method as user deo. So in the end, it should look like this, and the project should still work. And the mail service is a bit special because with the mail service, you don't really inject dependencies to other Java classes, but you'll inject strings or integers, which are basically properties. And we'll talk about properties in one of the next episodes, but you don't inject them with auto wired. You inject them with the add value annotation because they usually come from property files or from some server, or whatever. And that's what you use the add value annotation for. But all in all, I guess that's enough for this episode. Congratulations, that was a ton of information. So do your homework, and when you come back, the next question already pops up. Is that everything there is to Spring? Is it really just about creating new beans or objects or whatever? And in my mind, I think what makes Spring so special is the transparent proxying capability. If you don't know what proxying is, don't worry. We'll check it out right in the next episode. So let's get right after it.